I started woodworking as a hobby in a small shop without a lot of tools, making basic things that I needed. And I wasn't really ambitious about any of the projects that I was doing. I was still figuring out if I liked woodworking um, and watching videos from Jimmy DeResta, Jay Bates, Matthias Wandel, and all those guys who make these amazing projects. And I got more inspired to raise the bar a little bit. So that's what I'm doing with this project. I'm trying to push my skill, see where my skill level is at, and yeah, basically try to progress to the next level. And uh, the project that I chose to do this is a cantilever sewing box. I decided to add the pattern plywood. It's basically ripping down plywood and then re-gluing it to create all kinds of different patterns. And I decided to incorporate it into this project by making sides for my boxes. And I wanted to try and get a continuous pattern that got more complicated as the boxes progressed. Materials that I'm using for this project are oak, uh, sood, or sude, I don't know what it's called. It's some kind of hardwood, and uh, just regular old plywood. I don't have any Russian birch, because it's pretty difficult to get your hands on here in the Netherlands. But I think any plywood will work. So the first step for me was resawing all of the parts, making sure that I had enough material, and also getting started on gluing up the plywood panels. So that meant sawing strips, lots of strips, re-gluing them, re-sawing those strips again at a 45 degree angle, and then re-gluing them uh, to recreate the patterns for the sides. So in addition to the pattern that I'm creating by gluing the panels, I'm also ripping the plywood um, into two thinner pieces and re-gluing that to get a mirrored pattern. The challenge for me with the pattern plywood, especially with the resawing, was getting all of the panels to the correct thickness. I don't have a thickness planer or a drum sander or any fancy tool like that. I only have a table saw and a band saw for that. And the rest was up to sanding and accuracy. And I must say that I'm not disappointed with uh, the end result. I mean, it's not perfect, but I can definitely see that it's much better than if I were to make this a few years ago. So I call that progress. Assembly of all the smaller boxes will be exactly the same. I'll cut a small piece out of the sides, of the oak sides, and I'll place the pattern panel inside. Then I'll cut a groove on the inside of the, the sides and the front and back, and then I'll place the bottom in it.
After I had all my boxes assembled, glued up and dried, it was a lot of sanding, trying to get rid of the glue squeeze out and making sure that all of the boxes were nice and even because any deviation from a true straight edge is amplified when you stack the boxes on top of each other. And the trick I use to get the boxes nice and flat is by gluing a piece of sandpaper to a straight piece of wood, preferably some plywood, and then just apply pressure evenly onto the box and then just move it around. And it works pretty good. Next up was the handle for the entire project. And I'm going to make that out of some hardwood. To make the handle a little bit more than just a piece of wood attached to a box, I wanted to try different types of joinery and round over some of the edges to make it look a little bit more interesting. So that meant making some patterns out of MDF and using my router to create those round overs and round shapes. But also I wanted to attach the pieces of wood using some dowels with the same wood from the boxes. So I cut some dowels from oak and used those to plug the holes um, that I made attaching the whole handle assembly. I have to say that I really enjoyed making the patterns and cutting my final pieces using the router. It gives a really smooth finish and the additional benefit is that you can play around with your pattern pieces. They're just throwaway pieces of MDF so you can redo them really easily. They're really easy to fine tune because of the fact that it's such a soft wood, if you can call it wood at all. So I think I'm going to use that more often in the future especially with uh, the pattern follow bits that I got from Bosch or that I bought from Bosch, not sponsored here. And yeah, they work really nice. So uh, definitely something that you're going to see in more projects in the future. assemble the handle and the links that connect the boxes, I decided to go with some brass. I think it really complements the wood and it's a material that I haven't used in the past before. So I was interested to find out how, how it works or how it is to work with. And I must say it's, I mean, it looks nice, but it's so fragile that I don't prefer using it. I rather have a wood on wood joint, uh, and, or just use regular screws because the brass is so easily damaged. But I think uh, the end result is worth the extra effort. So making the links that connect the boxes and to give the cantilever action, I use the same hardwood that I use to make the handle. And I know from previous videos that I've watched among one of those is the video from Pask, who did a cantilever box project while I was building mine. So that was really fun to see. And my project encountered some of the same issues that he had, and they have to do with the accuracy of the holes that connect the boxes with each other. Because if they're not in exactly the right place, or the holes are a little bit loose, then the mechanism just doesn't work very fluidly. Uh, or the boxes don't stack neatly on top of each other when it's either opened or closed. So that really required some skill to make sure that all of the holes and all of the pieces had the holes in exactly the same position. I think this project is a nice portfolio piece to display what I'm able to do. So my initial thought on the cantilever action was that I wanted to use two links on each side. I know that you're supposed to use three, but I think two just look better. 
But when I started to try out the mechanism with just two links, it became quite obvious that that wasn't the way forward. Um, the boxes need more interlinking. I don't know, that's probably not the right word, but um, if it misses the, the, the link that connects all three of the levels, then it just collapses. I think if I make the boxes open less, uh, that there was more support on, on the, the level below it, then I could get away with uh, just two links, but then you couldn't access what's inside the box. So yeah, I think three links is the only way to go. So I modified mine to have three as well, which unfortunately isn't what I had in mind for the design, but I mean, it looks fine. For the lid of the boxes, I didn't have a piece that was wide enough, so I resawed the piece and re-glued it together so it fit as a lid, and that worked out fine. I just used glue for that, no biscuits or any other joinery, just uh, butt joint. To round over the links, I made a jig that goes onto my router and that made sure that all of the links had the same radius. It's basically the shell of the fastener that I'm using attached to a plate that went onto my router and that made it possible for me to just rotate the link and get the same radius on all pieces. And for the hinges of the lid, I also used some brass, but I'm a little bit disappointed on the actual strength of the hinge. I mean, I had to saw off a little piece because I didn't want to use the full width of the lid. And it's it feels a little flimsy. I don't have a lot of room for screws and um, it's just not what I hoped it to be. But uh, it's, a good, it's a good lesson. I know where I can use the hinges for and I know that if I need some real structural strength, it's better to opt for more solid hinges instead of a piano hinge. Anyway, it worked out in the end. The lid opens and closes and I mean, it's no construction quality um, work toolbox or something. It's probably going to be used as a sewing box, but that depends on what the person I'm giving it to actually is going to use it for. But that's going to be in a different video, so stick around for that if you're interested in to see where this project is finally going to end up. For a finish, I just went with a plain varnish. It's a transparent varnish and it's just there to protect the project. I didn't want any stain on it, but I did want it to be durable. So I put three coats of varnish on there and it's, it's really solid, so I'm happy with that. The finishing touch for this project were some leather straps that I attached to both the lid and the sides so that you can easily open the lid and pull apart the boxes in the cantilever action. To make sure that the links didn't wiggle loose over time, I used some Loctite in the screws to make sure that they stayed fastened even if you open and close the box several times. Uh, unfortunately, I had to drill into the plywood pattern to attach the, the straps to the side. But looking at the final result, I think this design looks pretty good. The leather is a nice contrast with the wood and it's an easy way to open the boxes. So as you can see in these shots, I filled the box now with some sewing supplies. And the person that I'm going to give this project to is a big sewing fanatic. So I'm hoping she's going to be happy with it and going to get a lot of use out of it. But like I said, more on that on an upcoming video. 
I hope you liked the build. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.